Right. Uh, LW stroke 23 stroke 0339, Fall of Lashington Hill, single story front side and rear wraparound extension with a new side dormer linking to existing dormer with alterations to the fenestration. I'd like to lead on this one. Councillor Borman. Yeah, thank you, Chair. <coughs> I know usually with our guidelines, front extensions are a no. But when I actually looked at it, it did make the house look nicer. It, made, it gave the house some character, especially as it's in a conservation area. Mm. But the side development, because at the moment, it sits up from number two on the hill mm -hmm. and they're very small windows overlooking uh, number two but now they want to put very large windows in and all i can see that actually is the loss of privacy for number two because they're not tiny windows they're large windows especially on the first floor overlooking the property so i would object to this on the loss of privacy for number two and it is a very large extension and it's not a large plot of land, so overdevelopment as well. Councillor Honeyman. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Councillor Paul is absolutely right. I mean, they're not big, plot, they're, one, they're obviously on a hill. That's why school project didn't go. I know it sounds yeah. a bit. I'm being facetious there. Like, you, you, you said I'm getting it, and, and the existing sides were, were just as big enough to what they wanted, whether or not they could have adapted the, the, the current situation but to to make the, what they want I know it's quite impressive if if you're, if, if, you're, if there's no one around um, having having the, the very large um, sides and the windows but I, th I think it, I think it's it's like it's, it's um, big bigger than it, it could be should be for that particular area so I, I would, I would object as well to it mm -hmm. thank you, you said, uh, second you're second yeah. any other comments there's quite a lot of um, building works going on number two at the moment. Did you, did you see yeah, that? Yeah, no, I didn't mention it's not really relevant. It isn't relevant, no. but there is an enormous mm. amount of building works going on in number two, which they're obviously looking over at the moment, mm. um, which must have come through quite a while ago. It's all happening at the moment. Okay, so uh, we've got the proposal that we'll go with number two. Objection, please. One, two, three, four, five against. Uh, those for it, those abstaining. Oh, abstain. Thank you. So that's uh, windows in the south elevation uh, be overlooking number two and uh, called loss of privacy. And uh, the general scale uh, of the development is out of, is out of character with the conservation area. Yeah. 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 Although the design of the front extension is would, would enhance the property, the general size of the development and the windows on the south side over the number two yeah, that's, yeah, sort of justify the objection. Right. Thanks. Okay. LW stroke 23 stroke 0337, 51 Marine Drive, Bishopstone. Two by dormers to side roof slopes, single storey extensions to the sides and rear front porch and rear terrace. Right, so on this one. Can you take this, Councillor Borman? <laughs> um, with a single storey extension, I find acceptable. The front porch is quite small and find acceptable. The dormers are subservient but they are still large and they're also on the side of the property and our neighbourhood plan says we do not have dormers on the side of the property but also because of the dormers on the side there's windows and this property is set if you look at the back boundaries it's set further back than the neighbouring properties, which means those windows are then looking in to the mm. neighbours' gardens <coughs> as well. So I would object to this application on all those grounds. Thank you. Is that find a seconder? Councillor Borman. Yeah, I'm just going to 
Councillor Hanneman, any comments? Was, well, I mean, the principle's fine. I, I don't think there's any objection sometimes to actually wanting to improve um, the, the rear, especially or the location of where that particular property is. And, mm. and you know, there are terrific sea views there. And, and, but having said that, you, if you have side extension, extensive side doors, which then overlook side of both sides of the neighbours, mm. and it, it, it can be quite quite intrusive to that. Um, so. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all for doing improvements at the rear, and if need be, especially yeah. there. And you, you need to go, you go you're exposed to the other sea by the sea as well, so you've got that going on, so you've always got that to be mindful of. But the extent of it is, is so it's too much at this, at this stage, at this yeah. good stage. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Right. Uh, who was first? I'm sorry, I'll tell you. Councillor Lillian. Yeah, um, we went and had a look at it the other day, and um, it was just me, just me, just again asking the beginning this question. But obviously, they've already got side windows on, so because they're now turning into dormers, that's why they're now an issue, is it? Yeah. Because they can have roof lights, because yeah. then you, you'd be looking yeah. up, up more. Mm. Whereas yeah. you have dormers, you're then looking uh, outwards. Because yeah. it also, again, when you think about it, the there's not much space, is there, to put any extra mm. building on because they really will be up against the others the other neighbours boundaries. Mm. It's like it was also put a sorry three years yeah, yeah. Right. putting a second floor on a bungalow mm. and that is one of the things mm. in if the neighbourhood plan for West Ward that actually you you don't put mm. a second because yeah, it also says about what if what's in character with what's already yeah. there as well isn't yeah. It? Yeah. yeah I think it's for the character of the bungalow so. yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I, was, I was just going to ask because these, these particular objections are based on. I haven't studied this fully yet. You'll learn gradually as you go along. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's an annex to the plan, which is it's, it's excellent, uh, excellent guidelines, very good uh, illustrations and explanations of what might be in character and what might not be in character. And, uh, certainly, Lewis District Council are taking more and more notice of what's in the guidelines because I think they find it useful as well mm -hmm. as far as they're concerned. Yeah. So yes, it is one of, it's the more, not, it's not the only useful part of the neighbourhood plan, but it is, uh, it comes into play almost every meeting mm -hmm. that we have with the committee. Yeah, one way to, yeah. 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 So tall, worth it? getting to know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bedtime reading. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got an objection on the table. And uh, can I have a show of hands of objecting to this application? One, two, three, four. <coughs> those against? And those abstaining? Right. Okay, three abstaining. Right. Okay. LW stroke 23 stroke 0307 and uh, 0308. I think we'll take those together, can't we? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, who would like to lead on this one? Councillor Boyle? Oh, who is that? I don't mind. Do I judge? Do you want to be a dude? Off to you. Okay, I'll, 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 subs I'll um, re-vote it, that's a good way. Summarise it. I think it's yeah, right. So, the, obviously this is where the um, town of Ray is, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. The removal, so they finally probably, probably have been able to get to it now. Some of the, this particular property and be able to work at the back. So, it is, as you say, it, it no, is. No, it's further than the road. It's nowhere near town. It's not like the side of the road. No, no. It's further up. It's not near town. I think it's next to it. It's the other. Oh, I wonder if I've done this completely wrong. Yeah. Sorry, up, up past the party emporium. It's on the way up yeah. to the side. Oh, it's past it. It's not the other way. I've, I've no, it's one of those it's little like cottages. What's that door when I was looking at the map? I thought, I thought it was underneath the um, un, un, underneath the panel parade and they wanted this up in the no, map. No, I no, must no, have no, done no, something. That's the other way. Mm. You looked at the wrong application. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. apologies, Chair. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the hairdressers on the corner with yeah, the bay well, windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought and was coming around. back no, this way, it's uh, mm. next door but one. It's nearly opposite the sea ports. Okay. Just just across, just across. Across. I, I better have stay on this one. That's the problem. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Obviously, they took pre application advice, mm. and the design and conservation officer gave huge amounts of advice mm. on 
what they could couldn't do, what she found acceptable, what she found unacceptable, wanted clarification on materials and things. And actually, because this is a listed building as well, I think it is going to make the property look better, especially the front windows and things and the back of the building. So I would support the application as long as the design and conservation officer is fully acceptable of all the changes along the way as well. Yeah, because the neighbouring property has got the sash windows which she wants to convert that to. So, you know, the front will look good. I did wonder about the extension, if it should be flint rather than steel, is it uh, um, some form of, um, I didn't write it down, but anyway, it, 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 it's a good contrast, so, and it's at the back. And sometimes you do need to put a little bit of modern with yes. yeah. the old, yeah. because it makes it look different yeah. and... Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good contrast rather yeah. than a bad match. Yeah. So that's why, mm -hmm. you know. It does say here, renovation of the external print work, so some of it yeah. must be some of it's going yeah. to be. Mm. Yeah, but on the whole, I personally support it because uh, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of work has gone into it so far to get it right. Mm -hmm. so, Councillor Buchanan. You're right. Oh, sorry. sorry. It's Councillor yeah. Honeyman yeah. first. Sorry. To be fair, I was only going to probably just say what Liz <coughs> already said anyway, but I was happy. I didn't read everything word for word, mm. but I read the bits that said the officers were happy mm. and um, everything's being followed according to what it should be. So that's why I was thinking, well, I was going to say yes for this mm. because everything's, as I said, pre application has been done. Mm. Um, yes. Councillor mm. Buchanan. You just said exactly the right. Okay. Any other um, questions? So, can I have a proposal that we support this application? Councillor Borman, seconded by Councillor Olivia Hanneman, and can I have a show of hands, please? One, two, three, four, five. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, there's a lot of work that's gone into this by the conservation officer, obviously, which is been very useful. Do you want me to mention, you know, the, the, the sort of support the, mm. the, the, the work that the conservation yeah. office has carried out on it and, uh, yeah. and, uh, yeah, it. Yeah, com and mm. commend it because they, obviously they've taken a lot of trouble over it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll add that to the support motion. <coughs> commend the house owner as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. same. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're just, actually, trying to. Yeah, trying to do it right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, there's been will on, will on both sides to mm. do that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mentioned that as well. Mm. Right, so um, there were no planning applications received on uh, week commencing the 26th of June, so we go on to tree works. And the first one is TW stroke 23 stroke 0049. TPO. And this is at 14 Seafield Close. Okay. Uh, no, no, I won't start. No, no. not a tree. That's the Bowman. It's a crown lift and a thin, so I can't see of any reason why we would object to it, so I'm quite happy to support it. That's a kind of secondary. So, any other comments? My only comment was the lack of information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know if it was in the front or the back. Well, that's well, it wasn't why in the front because I've been around there. Oh, right. yeah. So I couldn't find it. Yeah. That's okay. why I found it difficult because I couldn't see it. Yeah. Thank you for that. It's not in the front. Okay, so can I have a show of hands of uh, supporting this application? Well, that's uh, supported unanimously, thank you. Uh, TW stroke 23 stroke 0053 stroke TPO, Griffin Lodge, Eastbourne Road. We've had plenty of uh, uh, luxury, information on this one. <laughs> yeah. That's how it should be, I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, yes, I, have, I haven't been to see it, but obviously it's a home over Crocus Islands. 
I would prefer the option rather than taking out an oak tree which takes so long to grow mm. um, that if they needed to there was a reduction it was a reduction of branches rather than actually taking away an oak tree. Mm. Having just done some reading on oak trees, yeah. it's like no, we shouldn't be taking out oak trees. Mm. Especially an evergreen one which would have taken yes. even longer to grow. Mm. Thank you. Um, I agree that the removal should not be accepted. But even the reduction, they haven't seeked advice from Arbor 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 Yeah, Arboriculture. That's the one, thank you. <laughs> I never say it. Um, and actually, I think they should have seeked professional yeah. advice yeah, well. because even remove. Redu reducing the branches by one to two meters might cause damage to the tree or might not be appropriate. So, actually, ob objecting to the removal, but they should seek advice before even looking at reducing the size. Or, or you could you could leave it to LDC's own tree officer to sort of rule on that. Say that you say that uh, as far as the options are concerned, you would. Uh, support the option to reduce but as far as the extent of that reduction you'd want to rely because of the lack of information in the application you'd want to rely on the um, input of the tree officer uh, uh, as, as a sort of provider if, 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 uh, if you're yeah. okay with yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Uh, come back. Yeah, actually, no saying about that. Um, having, I, while I was, we had a few days off, I actually got to read, some book, read a book for a change. Um, and it mentioned about the fact oaks, as they get older, just send out more branches, sometimes to lower ones, and sometimes stabilise themselves. So actually, yes, I totally agree. I should have gone to, that actually does need to be done, checked out by a tree surgeon as to whether those branches actually will unbalance or they're there because the tree is needing to do it mm. as it gets older. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was reading the other day. Yeah. I mean, they're allowed to put an application in mm. without the input of a tree surgeon. Obviously, it's advisable that they do, but if they if they don't, then the, you know, the tree officer will deal with that side of it. it, it, it you can't say you've got to have a, a report from a tree surgeon. But, Tree officer will just uh, use his own expertise and make his own decisions. Does a, a, a person who is experienced with trees have should uh, well, they should do yeah. with a TPO? Yeah, it's yeah. not like a you know a normal no. tree that you no, but in, in this case sell. it will just be left to the tree officer to, yeah. to decide on that. So as I said, if we if we if you want to go for the lesser option and say you know the the extent of the reduction should be. Um, judged on by the district council's tree officer, mm. but um, then that that would send the right message, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, both those, um, Secretary of uh, Council Borman, and if there's no other comments. I think um, it would be a shame to lose a mature yeah. old oak. It's mm -hmm. quite rare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know they've got all year round yeah. you know, presents, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Can I have a show of hands? That's um, unanimously okay. supported that um, resolution. Two W stroke twenty three stroke zero zero four three stroke T C A. For the Crouch Crouch Lane. I'll probably take it together with yeah. the other one, I think. Okay. They put their neighbouring one or something. So that will then be 40, uh, 0044 at 5, the Crouch mm. Crouch Lane. So take the two together. Same person is up time. Mm. Mm. I couldn't um, find them. I couldn't find them either. Did you find them? All right. I found it mm. um, and I saw where the sycamore was and it's quite a small sycamore at the moment but it probably should never have been allowed to get even the height it is at the moment because of where it is in close proximity to buildings mm. and to those residents and, and to those properties. So I think it's, I mean I didn't go up close because I can't really just walk up and sort of stare and then walk mm. back out again. But I think, yeah, it should never have been allowed to get to that size in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
just to point out, these are sort of slightly lesser applications than for CPO trees, yeah. Yeah. because they're just trees in conservation yeah. areas. They're not specifically yeah. preserved yeah. trees. They just come under the rule that if you want to fell a tree, in any tree in a conservation area, you have to, to get consent. Right. I don't think Actually, that was my question. This isn't a TPO issue we're talking about. Mm -hmm. No, it's just sort of a lesser power. power. It's, yeah. still, it's still a rule. And it's a lesser power. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I looked on the map. It's in there, somebody's back garden. Right? It's no. not, it's, you can't see it from the front. Can you? Well, the, the, sorry to... The oh, front, yeah. front, um, you've got the... It's a sort of little lane, mm -hmm. not even a little lane. There's mm -hmm. a couple of houses like that. Yeah. And it's basically... That's why it's under four and five, because it's sort of there. So it's, 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 it's in their front gardens, but it's, it's, they've got the houses here, so they walk there, and then it's sort of there. Mm. That's why it's obviously on four and five. Mm. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Councillor oh, Yeah, thank you, Chair. I can remember Councillor Lord calling sycamores the weeds of the, the trees. trees. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, basically, the trees in the conservation area does it give a character to the area but if it doesn't well, it's, it's sorry it's right it's more of a case of it's going to get too big mm -hmm. and I did a little bit of reading about it it said it can get it's two foot deep and then the spread can be I think that, I, should, I knew I should have written this down <laughs> really should but, yeah. but like 30 meters mm -hmm. wide and at pure maturity yes. again I might have got that wrong I should have written the comments down that I, the bits that I read it's the wrong place mm -hmm. So yes, I agree, I don't like taking trees down, no. but this could cause other problems. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments? So we propose uh, that we support this, uh, these two applications, can I propose a and second her? Thank you. And can I have a show of hands, please? That's unanimous, thank you. And then T, uh, TW stroke 23 stroke 0045 stroke TPO, five farm close. Thanks for Yeah, thank you, Chair. As far as I can see, this is a perfectly healthy tree. So, shouldn't be removed. And if you then look at the map that's uh, provided, this is a tree that's in a long line mm. of um, trees that I think were probably planted to protect Barn Close and Monarch Gardens because there's a whole long line and this is 17 and they go, they continually run on. Um, and the reasoning that they're asking for the tree to be removed I think is a little ridiculous because the trees would have been there before yeah. they moved in as yeah. well. So I would object to this application. Yeah. Have you seen the tree? Have you actually seen the tree? Because I went down there and I couldn't work out because it's a back garden. But when I tried to look at the line of trees, I couldn't work out whether it was associated with this house. It's quite difficult because of the angle of the gardens. But there was one tree that looked like a... It, well, it, it could be an ash, I suppose. It actually looked like a dead silver birch. But there was just not a leaf on it. And it was just sitting there in the middle of all of this, and I didn't know whether that was that, that was the ash, that it, and that it was a dead tree. Mm. So there wasn't enough information to know whether there was no. a reason. And I think that's the problem: is people not giving us reasons yes. for why they want to remove their yeah. tree, and they haven't used a professional to yeah. support their application. Yeah. yeah, if you had, if you had a reason, you could, you, you, you can, you can make a reasonable judgment, but. The, this, the felling and the reductions and all the reasons and all the all the, all the, all the outcomes that they want mm. need to be, you know, I don't know whether we have to give better advice to people when they apply. I just I'm confused that we're just not getting mm. the reasons. So I can just come back. Yeah. Just because you say there was a dead tree, but their reasoning was having to clear up the leaves from their garden and the birds. I think the, the birds in the trees that were, so they couldn't put their washing out, but they did say having to clean up the leaves. So if it's dead, then they wouldn't be cleaning up no, leaves I, of a dead tree. I, my judgment was it was in a different garden because of the way the line of the things were. I, had, I tried to work it out, but it was too close. It wasn't further enough down the road. So um, I don't think that tree was in their garden. Is, 
basically what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> It is very difficult. It's a line of ten trees quite close together, and it, you know they, they've submitted a map, which is halfway there, but they haven't actually specified which one. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, well, I mean, we, we've we've had problems over the years with the lack of information. Uh, I, I can always ask politely again uh, for these applications not to be accepted unless yeah. there's sufficient information mm. for us to, to give a, a sort of reasoned response. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 we get some and some. Before we've asked for photos to be compulsory because it's not too much trouble to make no, food. No, it's easy, but it, does, it just doesn't happen, unfortunately. So I, I'll, if it's okay, you know, I'll, I'll make another polite request for more information. And, and, but in, in this case, you could I suggest say you know, there's not enough information to to decide one way or another whether you know whether it should be felled or not. But yeah. it's up to you. Okay. Mm. It's also the, the, the developer would 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 know if there's timber in their garden when they bought property anyway, so that and that would be that would be should be fairly clear. Yeah. And obviously when Bar Close was built, probably that late eighties. Probably before then. Early from that. Late mm. Anyway, whenever it was then that's probably the Condition it was was to put trees at that stage to to separate off from like bar area, wasn't it? Bar, it is bar yeah. yeah. Separate it out well. to give it a bit of a distinction, yeah. a bit of a boundary, and um, a bit more natural boundary. Well, obviously, with slight value there, isn't it? Anyway, so um, I think this particular case is not strong enough to um, to certainly agree, agree to, to the felling anyway. You need more macro information. Okay. Anybody else want to? I just 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 thinking, Chair. It's also about setting a precedent. So you've got this, you've got he's got the boundary with the trees, uh, and if one person starts deciding to take one down, you could end up with quite a, a dotting. And it, we don't know what the impact on Monarch Gardens will be yeah. on the other side. It's a bit like taking a tooth out. There'd be a gap there. But and it's, then it's going to be another. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you'd have to look at it from the point of view of the, that row of trees as mm. to why they're there. Yeah. Um, more than this, so you're not okay. setting a precedent for everybody else to start taking them down. Really. So, can we have a proposal? Um, I presume by the debate that objecting to this application, oh, well, it, was, it was strictly an objection. Sorry, no, it wasn't. A it, it was a request for further yeah. information. Okay, right. right. So, you, you don't want to make a comment one way or the other. I That's suppose we object to it. Because if the um, tree officer considers our objection wrong, then he's yeah. going to grant it anyway. But actually, let's put it to him that actually we object. We can mention there's a lack of information, but from what the householder wrote, mm. that this is a healthy tree mm. because it says the leaves fall into the garden, they don't want to clean them up. Yeah. But the birds are in the garden and they can't hang the washing on the line. That's not a re valid reason to remove a tree. And so um, I would object. Also, uh, taking uh, Councillor Markwell's point about it setting a precedent as well. Yeah. And that's, and that's important. Okay. This is strictly speaking, for the record, they don't talk about leaves, they talk about bird droppings. Mm -hmm. so just for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Councillor Yeah, just to add it also, it's about no disease, no damage to the property, excessive shading, and as I said, bird droppings that cover our garden patio reduces ability to dry clothes. Clothing. Mm. That's well, what it was, no disease. It's normally, excessive shading is, is the reason, so yeah. that, that, that's included in there. But yes, I mean, you know. We could say we haven't really got enough information, but we wouldn't want it to see. We wouldn't want to see it removed because it's an important row of trees, mm. and it appears to be a healthy tree, mm. uh, unless it's uh, you know it's, to, it's sort of persuasive justification. But there's not enough information for us to decide. But we we would tend to object because we wouldn't want to lose a tree in that in that row. Yeah. Could we say not enough technical? Yeah. Because they've given us their information, yeah. we need technical a, a, information. Amenity information. Yeah, we need that. to borrow cultural information. Yeah, fine. And is it is it possible, do you think, on this particular tree, that the tree officer might say that they can produce it as opposed to removing it, to give them a little bit more light or...? 
Yes, it's possible. Yeah, that would be a sort of... Uh, as a, as a but, but, but it's a sort of compromise that they would often come to in these yeah. cases. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, what happens then? Now the second block, please. Everybody's got a second. Thank you. Yes, I can I have a show of hands, please? That's um, unanimous. Objection with those provisos. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to uh, agenda item 5 on page 6. Mm. This is, uh, I can just introduce it. This is a consultation from the uh, South Downs National Park Authority. Um, they've included all town and parish councils within the park area out of courtesy, but the real purpose of the consultation is aimed at um, professionals, uh, architects and uh, planners who are submitting applications to the South Downs authority and want to know what sort of supporting information is required in in different categories of, of application. So I thought the I'll just hand out the um, I think there's some We've done copies the over there, yeah. It, it's just to sort of add to the training that uh, add to the training that new members had a few weeks ago. There, there's uh, there's two lists, if you like, when, when an applicant wants to put in an application. There's the basic yeah. information, okay. which we covered, I think, in the training session, which every application requires uh, nationally, which is the where the site is, the block plan showing the extent of the new development, the, the existing elevations of the house, um, if it's a householder application, and the proposed elevations. The, the sort of basic plans that you see on the householder um, extension applications that, uh, that are the most common ones that we deal with. But for the more compl complex applications, each authority draws up its own list of requirements. And this is the list that um, the National Park Authority are seeking consultation on. So you'll see that when you do look at a, sort of a more complex application from the National Park Authority or from Lewis, you see all sorts of uh, studies and reports that have been added to the supporting documents like heritage statements, biodiversity uh, statements, um, tree surveys, etc, etc. Now this shows you exactly what sort of specialist study is required as supporting a document for in each category of application. So it gives you an idea of, of, of what the authority requires. Uh, um, for you know, example, heritage statements uh, with regard to um, applications in conservation areas or close to historic parks and gardens, flood risk assessments when they are required or when they are not required. So it's, it's a sort of adding, adding to your training to show exactly what uh, specialist studies are required for different categories of application. As I say, in addition to the standard ones, which are just the, the basic plans and the site location plan. So as you go through on the left hand side, you'll see the, the category that's um, of application, like with uh, a major housing development, you'll need the traffic implication report, but you'll also need an application for justification for the housing mix and, and uh, matters like that, and in line with the policies of the relevant local plan, which are on the right hand side. So it, it's, a, it's a rather, it's a technical matter. We've been consulted on it, as I say, out of courtesy. We've, we've got no real reason to respond but it's an opportunity to let members know, especially new members, know what's involved in putting in different sorts of applications and what might be required. But, so I'm happy to answer any, any queries about it, but really it's just for noting. Very comprehensive, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other 
you'll see things like also travel plan. All applications for major developments require a travel plan. Yep. Uh, and a major development is a development of, in a residential category, of over, over 10 houses or dwellings. Right. For industrial development, it's a, a development of, over a certain ground area. But for residential applications, it's 10 houses or more. Um, so any questions? Any questions? So just, yes, thank you. Just, just a quick one then. Uh, not related to this per se, but is there anything in CIFA this would cover? And uh, the jurisdiction or the water well, seas? It's just stone. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, as far as the National Park area is concerned, it, right around the fringes, Bishopstone Village, uh, the properties on Alfriston Road, um, and properties around the Chington conservation area. Uh, so, so we, 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 uh, um, just the fringe, just the, the to the east of Chington Lane, I think. Uh, but obviously, um, any development, I mean, development like um, any development we would want to carry out at Seaford Head. Um, for example, you know, it has been talked in the past, for example, of, uh, of the town council uh, developing some waste or uh, old allotment land by the golf club mm -hmm. for holiday accommodation and things like that. So mm -hmm. there, there's various um, developments around Seaford it could relate to, but really it's more of a, a, a general guide to members. To, because the, the Lewis one would be quite similar to this. This just happens to be a new one from the South Downs, which we've been asked to uh, cons which uh, they've asked us to submit our views on. So but it just shows you what sort of specialist um, uh, input is required for different categories of application. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're saying so the, the golf course doesn't fall under this piece of paper? Well, yes. you know, if, if, if anybody wanted to apply for any development on um, the land to the east of South Down Road, that's all. The, the, the park boundary is, a, is, a, is a, the, to the east of Florence House, for example. Okay. So Florence House is not in the National Park, but the National Park is all the land beyond that, mm -hmm. going round to the east of um, Chington Lane, mm -hmm. across, it, it, it's mostly open land, but it does include Bishopstone Village as you go around towards the west, and the the scattering of properties on all Friston Road going up to high and over. So we do get relatively few applications um, from the South Downs National Park Authority, but it's obviously an you know it's a it's a large part of our area, but not significant part of our area for for applications. Mm -hmm. But I say this is just an example of what's required for different types of application, whatever the authority is. Maybe one or two a year, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, but Bishopstone Village, maybe three or four. Yeah, it's about half a dozen a year overall, mm. including a few tree ones as well. But, um, yeah. Anybody else? So, can I just have a show of hands to note the report? Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item six, to inform the committee of the public inquiry commencing the 18th of July. Yes, this is just to confirm that the, um, <coughs> they finally agreed a venue, uh, or found a venue for the inquiry. This is the four day inquiry into the uh, proposed development of 40 apartments by McCarthy and Stone on the Constitutional Club site and the incorporating a new new premises for the Constitutional Club and uh, it's going to be at um, King's Church um, Brooks Road on, in, on one of the um, Lewis Industrial Estates. Um, it's difficult often finding a venue because the requirements of a venue are quite, um, the, uh, quite numerous requirements relating to Wi-Fi uh, and access etc. Uh, which is why they had a problem in this case, as there are very few venues 
which would uh, fulfil the requirements. So, but it has been uh, confirmed now. Um, I've been advising interested residents as to how they can in, in, uh, object, how they can have an input to the inquiry. Uh, the main the main part of the inquiry or where residents should attend is the first day because then they can register their objection with the inspector, make their objection on the first day and they don't have to attend the inquiry for all four days, they can have, have their say on the first day because inspectors on these longer inquiries, they're used to the fact that if there are objectors, they would usually turn up at the beginning but not necessarily be expected to, to last the course. So, um, Lewis District Council are putting up quite a strong case against the development. It's uncertain at the moment whether the County Council will be continuing with their objection on the highways issues because there are quite sensitive highways issues relating to the new access that they want to make to um, from Crouch Lane opposite to Seaford House. Obviously, if the members will be aware how narrow those roads are. There's also been some sort of late doubts over the ownership of the, the green space <coughs> at the front of that site. Um, some sort of uh, doubt over the ownership because part of it is being used as a vis visibility display for the new access. So although, it's, it, although there's less than two weeks to go to the beginning, beginning of the inquiry, some of those issues are still uncertain. But Talking to the Lewis District Council officer who is going to lead their case, he is determined, he, he, he dislikes or is very critical of the general accessibility, uh, as, as anybody would be who knows the site, with, uh, with that sort of narrow network of roads around there. And he, he will be making that point quite strongly, and I will be there for the town council supporting the Lewis case and sort of adding our own objections. Uh, we considered the application back in June and had a quite long list of objections which I'll be putting to the um, inquiry uh, over the four days under various issues. So. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Uh, I think the council first. Please. No, go on. Um, okay, I'm sure I'll have more than one, but I'll do with the first one. Mm -hmm. um, there's some issue that you mention here, which is about the it's about the 2.73 years since the document that what is it the it's for neighbourhood plan neighbourhood plan yeah yeah mm -hmm. and because it's now over two years mm -hmm. you can't use the information from that. Sorry, can I just point of order? As this is in a confidential paper, are we allowed to discuss it with the council? Yes, well, I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's Sorry, just that's confidential paper. These are documents which... It's, it's regarding documents which should by now have been on the LDC website. Okay, that's fine. I just thought, because yeah, yeah, that's they're, got they're, confidential they're, splashed across there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're going on the website, or well, they should be there already, but it, it's uh, at the moment... <coughs> Yeah, I, I wasn't I wasn't aware actually that they were, but there's we cannot I can answer the questions anyway about the uh, neighbourhood plan. Okay, so it's the timing of when it was valid from to its validity now mm. in terms of using it as an instrument to uh, complain about development. But when do, when does when does the actual clock start ticking for a building application? Is it from the time the first application is made, in which case it, for this project, in which case it would have been, you know, before the 2.7 years, these years, or is it when the application is agreed? I didn't, I'd imagine it was from the time the application was made. No, no, it's from, it's when the application is determined, which will be that week of the 18th of July is the relevant time. The, 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 there's a big... There's a big issue here, briefly, that uh, it's quite complicated, I'll be as brief as I can. Members might recall that 
back in December, the government proposed amendments to its national policy. Uh, and the, the, the flagship one was uh, relaxing um, housing delivery targets, for, particularly for uh, districts in the southeast. There had been a big outcry about uh, overdeveloping uh, the uh, in the overdevelopment with residential development in the southeast. That certain MPs were rebelling against the amount of housing that was being forced on them and the government responded by proposing amendments to the national policy relating to how many houses districts should deliver by saying that the targets will be made more flexible under the national policy uh, and they consulted on a, a list of amendments and it also included a response to the criticism that local and neighbourhood plans were deemed to be out of date once they were more than two years old because that was another criticism from local councillors and local residents that there wasn't enough weight being put on local and neighbourhood plans and um, the government said it would be changing that proposed amendments to the national policy by and it said it would extend the, the life of a neighbourhood plan, if you like, to five years, so that the policies of a neighbourhood plan could be could carry weight up to five years old instead of two years. But those, although the government said that they would be implementing those amendments shortly after the consultation period ended in March, they haven't yet been implemented. Now, uh, a lot of the press and the media treat these housing targets as already having been relaxed. You know, there's a general sort of feeling uh, and reporting that uh, you know that the the pressure that was put on by these MPs in the southeast uh, had been sort of had been dealt with, and that they were happy, and that the targets in the future will be more flexible. But in fact, this is, we're in the same situation now as we were before the uh, amendments were proposed in December, which means, unfortunately, that unless the amendments are introduced in the next few weeks, then for this inquiry, the neighbourhood plan will still carry very little weight, which is one of the reasons why we lost the appeal on the Churchill development at Sutton Road, because the inspector considered that the need for more housing outweighed the policies in the local and, and neighbourhood plans because those plans had to be deemed to be out of date because they were over two years old. <laughs> I hope, to, hope you could follow that because it, it's, it's not... You know, I was going to say something after it was an ass, but basically what we're saying, this has no value whatsoever. I wouldn't say that. In terms, just a, it, in terms of issues like this. It can't carry... Because it's over two years old, it can't carry the weight it would have carried if it had been new, if it had been newly introduced as it was in 2020 when it came in. Okay, two years isn't a very long time. Is no, it? it isn't. It's a bit harsh. But that was why rules were being changed, but they haven't actually been changed yet. So why don't we put a revision one on this and reissue it with a new date? <laughs> Next week. Yeah. <laughs> it would be, be nice. Not yeah. nice as well. It would make things a lot easier at the inquiry. And I'm just, I'm still hoping, I'm still looking at the internet every day to check whether these rules have been implemented because they don't need, it doesn't need legislation to change the, the national policy. All it needs is, is, a, is a pronouncement from the government. And they said that they were going to do it in the spring of this year. And then it got postponed to June, uh, but now it's getting a bit late as far as the July inquiry is concerned. So that, that's, that's all I can say on that really. Because yeah, all, all the points you make in here, in your paper, mm. actually pretty valid, and they're supported in many cases by this, mm. and supported by well, the view of the people in the town. Mm. I think Lewis will, Lewis, District Council will put up a good case. I've seen their stuff. That'll be put on the website soon. You'll, you'll be able to see it yourself under the application reference. And I think 
the difference between this scheme and Sutton Road <coughs> is the quality of the amenity in this particular area. Uh, the fact is on the edge of the conservation area, you've got this building will block views of the sea and the Martello Tower that, are current, that currently you get from the, sort of the roundabout, if you like, at the top. Uh, and so it will have quite a significant effect on the quality of this little, quite picturesque area where you've got the, you know, the four or five roads coming off that central point. And that's right on the edge of the conservation area. And Seaford House itself, which is right immediately to the west, uh, it is will be impacted because it's close, mm. and, and, a listed building. and there's a listed building which is the stone, the stones, so, uh, the stone yeah. house, stone house, which is at the top of Crouch Lane. Mm. Well, also, so you've got a lot more amenity issues than you did at Sutton Road on the A259, uh, which is let's say went went against the council back in December. Mm. Can I let yeah, Councillor Hammond? Yes, sir. Councillor, oh, yeah. thank you. Um, all I can say is, can we have it recorded? Our thanks to Jeff for the mm. huge mm. amount of mm. effort that he's put in mm. in order to get these documents and to actually then go along to the appeal and mm. give our side and our objections to that, please. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah. If we win, it'd be good. Mm. Anyway. Right. So, thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it needs minutes in as well. I didn't say recorded. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got to insist on that one with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 The inspector will start at 10 on the dot and he'll expect right. anyone who wants to take part to introduce themselves at that point. And, but he will take note that people won't want to stay for four days. And um, you know, if you do want to speak as a town councillor, uh, you'll be able to speak on some, at some time on that first day, on the Tuesday the 18th. Um, but, but you need to be at the beginning. You can't yeah. uh, roll in at eleven o'clock and uh, and do it then. It, it, it's quite um, it's, it's quite formal. As so is it normally like so. ten o'clock? It normally by five, normally. Uh, we did get normally an hour for lunch. Or yeah. Oh, yeah. To be an hour for lunch at least. Uh, Four thirty to five, it will finish, depending on when they've got to a convenient break in, say, yeah, in the proceedings. Season, yeah. And some of the. Proceedings are sort of round table discussions, and some are more formal, um, more more like a, you know, a court discussion, cross examination. And McCarthy and Stone are represented by uh, a KC, a very sort of uh, eminent, okay. eminent uh, barrister, and Lewis have a barrister as well. So it's a mixture of formal and informal. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Anything else? So I just have other thoughts here. Yeah. There was an application for this same site four or five years ago or something? Yep. And that was a much lower profile uh, development. Mm. Um, and, but in, 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 in essence it didn't go ahead, but it's not clear why that might have been. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was townhouses, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 2017. Well, it, was, it was townhouses and yeah. a development with a courtyard and, and right, yeah. Like yeah. two bedroom houses or something. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any great desire to keep the, the Con Club as it is because mm. it's a rather unusual design and doesn't really fit in. But it, this is a massive overdevelopment of that site. Mm. I think townhouse, I think something other than the, the club townhouses in a more sympathetic design would be would be fine but this is this enlarges the footprint and and, and it goes up to four and a half stories so you know it's a, yeah. a real a real overdevelopment yeah. so because so, the, the, the next 40s with all these um, traffic issues it almost makes this site undevelopable mm. Mm. Yeah. I know with well, the townhouses 
um, we asked for a sort of a one-way system to be put yeah. in, and that just got a complete no. That's so, that's but I want to wrap this, this, this is up. Almost well, I think a more modest development would be okay. Yeah. You know, it's got a few different options. Um, and as for the future, yeah, it's just that. So, can I ask uh, that we note this report? Note it. Let's note it. Thank you. That leads us on to agenda item seven notify the committee of decisions taken by Lewis District Council on applications previously considered by the committee. Um, yeah, I can't remember if there's anything to mention. Um, oh yeah. Yes, you see the application for four church streets has been withdrawn. Yes. So I thought you'd be pleased yeah. about that and um, mostly our decisions have been supported including the um, objection regarding Upper Belgrave Road. Yeah. Just a couple of cases where that, uh, where that hasn't happened. Uh, the TPO in relation to 35 St Peter's Road. Yeah. I think I've some pages where I just uh, um, agreed. Yeah, they approved. Mm -hmm. It's gone already. Has it gone already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're very quick giving the TPO's um, approval or objections, and literally once they do get that yeah. approval, they can remove the tree very quickly. Mm -hmm. it's this probably doesn't directly relate to this, but it's uh, well, indirectly. Yeah, uh, the other side of the street in um, 35 St. Peter's Road, there's a cherry tree that's been um, piloted and the bark's been removed around the whole of the circumference of the tree. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to survive. I just want to lift it down. Mm -hmm. It may not have a TPO on it. Ch cherries mm -hmm. wouldn't usually be covered by a TPO. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, so uh, yeah, I, mean, mm. I don't think it would be sort of formally preserved. Mm. Mm. Is, there, is there a difference? Should be a chair. Is there a difference? Um, if it was a private road, as that one is. I don't know. Does it change the where the tree is? Is it outside, is it outside the street? It's on the grass road. Mm. It's a private road. Does that change the the legality of it? No, no. It's, it's just it's well. The, if it's a private road with a sort of grass area, it usually be the a management company that would would own it and and, and maintain it. It just could be residents. It could, it could be the, it could be made up from the residents. It could be it yeah. could be some just some land agents, but mm. usually it's uh, made up from the residents. Mm. But, uh, yeah, there's, no, there's no rules about it. Okay, so can we note the report? Okay, that's yeah. it. Thank you. And that concludes the meeting. That's. 22 minutes past 8.